Welcome back to Making with Z. In this video, I was going to show you one of the things that I've made in the past. Uh, quite a few years ago, 2007, I decided to do a wind generator slash windmill. Uh, and here I actually have, this isn't what I'm going to talk about in the video. It's actually a scale model. Um, so <clears throat> what I decided to do in the area, I wanted to build a wind generator windmill and that mostly to create power, but also um, for looks. So the area I'm in is wooded. It's not the best location for a wind generator, but I wanted to do it anyway. So what I wanted it to do is I didn't want it to look out of place. So I wanted something that looked more like a farm type windmill. And this is what I came up with. So you can see in this model, which I actually made years later when I got a 3D printer, um, I had all the drawings and everything. and I said, why not? You know, I have everything I can easily convert it over and print it. So I did. And this is what it looks like. Uh, this is actually wood filament. Um, if you guys in the 3D printing uh, are looking at, you know, doing some models in wood filament, it does actually work really well. It looks, smells, sands like wood. And for this project, it was perfect. So, um, and I might do a video on that later on if people are interested. But uh, in this video, we're going to talk about the real wind generator. So <clears throat> the wind generator itself, the real one, is 17 and a half feet tall from the base to the point up here, center point of the nose cone. So yeah, you can see it in the video here. And then <clears throat> from the ground level to the top of the platform is about 13 feet. And at the top here, I've got a four by four section. Um, I came up with this design to support a Schedule 40 pipe that holds the actual wind generator head on it. Uh, on paper, it looked great. I didn't really think about anything, but when I actually built the platform and climbed on top here, it was high enough that I wasn't comfortable standing up there. So luckily I had some good friends who weren't afraid of heights and decided to help me assemble the wind generator. And like I said, it's been up since 2007, been through some serious storms. Um, and it survived, no problem. So the tower design, the pipe, everything worked out really well. So what I wanted to do in this video is show you guys um, some footage of it actually running and uh, some of the details behind it, why I chose what I did. And really, if you're looking at building something similar, um, I want to give you some hints, tips, and things I would have done better. So let's get started. So this is the scale model another one actually i made two of them uh running you can see it working so at the base of the model there's a little circuit board with supercapacitors that uh, take energy from the solar panel on this unit charge the supercapacitors and then discharge them and when it discharges it does turn the blades like you see here and typically it'll run for about a few minutes until it discharges and then it'll take a few minutes to charge again and the cycle will just continue uh, all day. Okay, here I have an assembly drawing that I created of the actual wind generator. And I talked about some of the dimensions in the beginning of the video. But some of the other things you can see, I did also cement the uh, 2x4 treated lumber and the Schedule 40 pipe into the ground to support the whole uh, wind generator. Um, so the main pipe, it's a two and a half inch diameter schedule 40 pipe and the rest of the structure is all two by four treated lumber. So here's a section view of the wind generator head. At the bottom, what, what fits into the two and a half inch schedule 40 pipe is a swivel unit that I made with some brushes in it that allow the windmill to point into the wind and still transmit power uh, to the ground. At the back, there's a permanent magnet alternator. In the middle, and there's an air cylinder. I'll explain that to you. And in the front, there's a disc brake in front of the rotor assembly. So <clears throat> in the actual, we'll take a look at a photo here of an actual photo. So in the front, you can see the blade assembly without the blades. Uh, it's 84 inches in diameter. And behind it is the disc brake unit. And behind that wall, you can see the air cylinder that activates the disc brake. And then in the back of the unit, uh, there's the permanent magnet alternator, which we'll talk about in the video. 
and you can kind of see the pivot assembly which will also show in the video here later uh, that allows it to turn into the wind um, but also you know transmit the power down to the ground so in this photo you can see the center section of the wind generator and what you're looking at is a rotary union for the air line coming up through the schedule 40 pipe uh, and allows to transmit air through the pipe up into the uh, air cylinder that you're looking at and I'll show you what that air cylinder does what the function of it uh, is in this design so in this next photo you're looking at uh, the wind generator head uh, in the workshop and I had my daughter there uh, what I did for her is I hooked up that radio there that you see on the table and when you turn these blades at a very slow speed uh, the radio will actually play and actually you don't even have to do a complete uh, revolution you can actually just turn them partially or turn them even back and forth and the thing creates power enough to run that radio easily so that's why I chose the permanent magnet alternator uh, as the you know the way I'm generating the power so in this photo you can see when we're putting it together um, you can actually have two people easily stand on that platform on the top to uh, assemble the wind generator head Okay, because I'm in the worst spot ever for uh, you know, a wind generator, I needed something that was able to run in really low speeds. So a regular car alternator needs high RPMs to generate any kind of usable power. So I had to go to a permanent magnet alternator, which can create a much more power at lower speeds. So this unit that I used is advertised that it'll generate power as low as 60 RPM, and its peak performance, or not peak, but uh, where it's intended to be used is between 400 and 900 RPM. So that's the reasoning behind uh, the permanent magnet alternator. It's a little more money, but you know, I decided I didn't have to have um, any kind of gearing or belts. It's just directly coupled to the shaft. So here's a view of the actual alternator. Um, it's pretty much your standard uh, alternator that you'd see on your car, except it has permanent magnets inside. So here you can see the coupling I'm using now. It's the style that has uh, like a wave spring wave washer to couple it. The original coupling that I used was just the Lovejoy with the plastic spider in the middle. And what happened there, I wouldn't recommend those. What happened was in the winter and you can see it here in that photo it just made a, a lot of noise a clicking noise because the rubber got hard uh, as the temperature got colder so the other type is way better if you're looking for a coupling so this is the brush assembly that I ended up using because um, the alternator creates DC I only needed two wires and what I had to do is take these two pieces and what I did is machined a bunch of parts to make them adapt to the wind generator. So here you can see the brush holder that bolts to uh, the assembled unit um, that I'll show you here in a second. So it's all machined, uh, two wires, just a heavier gauge wire uh, that transmits power to the ground. So here's the other half of it with the thrust bearing uh, with the other side of the, the brush you know assembly and you can see the air line coming up through the bottom of the assembly for the air cylinder so this is the sub assembly of the pivot unit uh, showing you how this works so here are the two brushes that rub against those two points right there and they're spring loaded so when it's assembled it has some pressure on it uh, that's the housing that will slip over it and I'll show you that here is where the actual wind generator head mounts and a bronze bushing uh, for the pivoting. Um, so it also has a thrust bearing to hold all the weight and um, that's the thrust bearing assembly uh, that I used. And here you can see from the top view of it you can see the hole coming up through the middle that also allows air to come up through the pipe to actuate the uh, air cylinder that I used. So here's the assembled unit. You can see, you know, the two points uh, showing through the opening here. 
and everything you know here this unit will mount I'll show you here how it mounts um, and again like those are spring-loaded so as you push down it provides pressure on those two contact points so this whole unit rotates spins into the wind and you know you get your negative and positive power is transmitted down through the pipe uh, to the ground and then you can see the fitting there on the end and the two wires coming out uh, transmitting the power and this is the disc brake that I use and I'll show that how this functions next in the next part here so what I've got here is a small air compressor uh, that I can turn on and, and create some air pressure and once the compressor runs it powers an air cylinder inside the, the wind generator head so uh, you can see here there's the air cylinder and once we give it some air it goes up and when I release it it drops back down and you can see it's connected to a cable and that cable goes around to a uh, disc brake that's you know just from a regular uh, mountain bike or a uh, bike is what I used so you can see as the pist the air cylinder goes up it clamps the um, disc brake there so and what was this was intended for was if there were high winds I can actuate this and stop uh, the wind generator from spinning if there was ever any issues and it does work it works very well okay so here you can see the actual wind generator and it's pretty it looks windy but it's not like again I'm not in the best area for a wind generator but uh, I wanted to do it so I went ahead and did it uh, it also has a solar panel 100 watt panel on the side and in the summer it supplements the power um, to you know the the whole system so here you can see it spinning below it I do it does power a, a camera that I have a Wi-Fi camera that also monitors the backyard there so here it's not a very high speed uh, just probably barely generating power at this point um, <clears throat> and it is able to handle very high winds I didn't have any issues uh, throughout the years that it's been up so here you can see at the base I have a military style uh, sh container that I bought is surplus um, and the controls so I do have a charge controller I do have an air gauge there and a point to uh, put air to the system if I needed to stop it some breakers voltage uh, current gauges um, inverter unit and uh, two uh, deep cycle batteries is what I'm charging two 12 volt deep cycle batteries so in this next photo here you can see in the winter time uh, what it looks like so in the winter I get much more power all the leaves are down and I'm getting quite a bit of wind so it performs much better during the winter months than it does in the summer and fall um, and the solar panel still supplements the power and uh, it, it does work really well it, like I said I've had it up since 2007 and it's been through some serious storms uh, and it's held up with no problem uh, nothing was ever damaged or broken so like I said it does you know it does charge two 12 volt deep cycle batteries and it powers that camera directly there on the wind generator but also in the house I have two circuits that I routed it to uh, the inverters outside in the box too but that converts it to 120 I send that to the house and actually the computer I'm making the video on is powered by uh, the wind generator and my router and um, modem and things like that are powered by it also and I can switch uh, you know between normal power and wind power depending on uh, you know if there's any issues where I do not have enough power uh, like I said the, one of the things I would have done different maybe with the permanent magnet alternator instead of uh, converting the DC right at the alternator uh, it might have been better to leave it AC and then use a rectifier diode further down the system and then you know convert it to DC and charge it uh, below uh, or in the house possibly and even maybe Put the batteries in the house but i've never had issues with them freezing or overheating in any of the different climates that it's gone through 
Okay, thanks for watching this video. Uh, definitely, if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments. Um, and check out some of my other videos. You know, I'm going to be showcasing some of the machines in the workshop and also a lot of different things I've already made and some new projects. So uh, if you're into machining, model building, 3D printing, RC cars, planes, anything like that, uh, definitely, you know, subscribe to my channel and uh, look out for new videos. All right. Thank you.